Hi guys, welcome to Church Talk. Today, we did it on time, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Uh, if you haven't heard us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you should probably go do that. And uh, with me today, last week was in Spanish, so of course we have an English one. We have Elliot Reyna, one L, two T's. Don't text me saying that I did a spell error or whatever. I don't want another you misspelled worshiper situation on my hands, which I didn't. Uh, the worshiper? I did not. I did not. You can have it uh, two P's or one P. If Tim Holland, a.k.a. my uncle, is listening, he's currently laughing. Now, Elliot, how are you? Good, good. I, my name is 1L2Ts. I guess my parents thought they'd be original for some reason. Okay. But I always have to explain it to the Starbucks people and get the helium written on there anyway, so I'm just used go. to it. There you go. Yeah, and yeah you just got to. That can be your secret, that yeah. it's 1L. Uh, I was uh, named out of a baby naming book. No, I wasn't. Um, I was named actually after the Bible and uh, Tom Cruise, Ethan Hunt from Mission Impossible. So be jealous. Um, my name was in the top five most picked baby names of my year. So Elliot's a little more special than I am. Now, Elliot, we know your name. Who are you? Where are you from? What are your credentials? That's tough. I don't really have credentials. I was born in Mexico City, moved around a lot, lived in Colorado, so I'm a Broncos fan. Moved back to Mexico sorry City. Oh, sorry. We have a, a Look, better record Peyton, than you guys. Peyton is not there anymore. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Super Bowl 50. Here, I got my right here. Check it out. Oh, no. There it is, the star. There it is. Zip it anyway. up so we can well, talk. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Kelly. Yes, you're forgiven. Well, we have, I've moved around a lot. We have lived in Tijuana. I've lived in Colorado. Then I moved to Christ for the Nations. So I studied there for three years, graduated in May, graduated. Didn't really get to walk or anything because of COVID, but, and now I work. Did you get a Zoom graduation? We did, they did like a video, mm. like a pre-recorded video. I see. So that's even, that's more special. Okay. Is it you like know? a slideshow? Um, no, it was actually a video. Like the teachers okay. came up and like gave nice words. Oh, okay. It was short. It was 10 minutes. Okay. So, you know, it's there on YouTube. I can rewatch it whenever I feel. Um, well, if you want to watch Elliot's graduation, <laughs> look it up. It's on there on YouTube <laughs> somewhere. And, uh, yeah, now I work at the church, um, Life Church, Coppell. the church, Life Church, church. Mundo de Fe in Capel. So uh, he came within the family. Um, now, what did you study at CFNI? Um, I did three years. Came out with practical ministry and pastoral major. Okay, so, yeah. very cool. So you want to be a pastor? I didn't at first. I'm like a BK, PK, so I ran away for for a long time. I didn't want to, but now I think I might end up okay somewhere in that. So you're so, you're a pastor's kid. You're a yeah. PK. Yeah, not senior pastor, but he was like ministry, co-pastor, okay. youth pastor for a while. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Yeah, uh, some PKs are wild. Some PKs are saints. Some PKs are a whole lot of everything. Some are some for one season and then switch to the other. Exactly. <laughs> it depends on the weather. You know, it gets below 70 and all of a sudden, you know, going crazy. Um, me as a PK, you're looking at it. Now, Elliot, today... Okay, you might have seen the title and been like, okay, you're lying. Yes, today we're going to be talking about the ins and outs of studying your Bible. But it'll be interesting. This is not going to be like a kindergarten class. This is going to be like profound. Um, and the youth group of Mundo de Fe Arlington, we're currently going through a name change. So I'm not going to reveal the name yet because I don't like it. So we're, we're working with the youth on uh, getting a little more creative. Uh, as of right now, it's Young Apostles. So I mean it. it I mean it, it's 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 not bad, but it, we get another level. We might just bite the bullet and be MDFA youth. Uh, anyway, so is that what you were rooting for? No, no. I I don't know. I I don't know. I'm not very creative. I'm I'm a boring person. So um, now <clears throat> we are going to be talking about how to study your Bible. So Elliot, you're educated. You went to CFNI. Um, you work at Mundo de Fe Capel, which means you, or Life Church. That means I means know you, everything, basically. It basically means you know everything. You're of the elites. You, you know, everything. Now, let me ask you. Um, we're going to get into a lot of things, but I guess to kick it off, how should we interpret the Bible? Whenever we read the Bible, maybe it's a verse that you don't know. Maybe it's a verse that you perceive to mean a certain thing. How should we interpret it? That's... That's like the question. That's why it takes, I think, so much time to that, study that's, it. That's why I put it first, kind of to lay out the foundation. Of yeah, the so let's see. How do we start? 
I mean, I guess we have to think of what the Bible is and what it isn't. I think a lot of people, when we think of the Bible, a lot of people think, okay, it's a book about, you know, some encouraging words. And it's not what it is. It has encouragement for sure, but it's not what it's about. A lot of people think it's like the roadmap to life. And granted, there's Bibles in the back. There's like maps, whatever, you know, like Saul, that he did his little thingy. But and there's literal roadmaps. There's little maps. But it's not like the mo- roadmap to life. That's not what it's there for. Well, it's, an important point that uh, my mom and I were talking about after church the other day mm-hmm. is that God is not practical. And so we were talking about all that kind of thing. And that probably means the Bible is not practical. You know, there's things in there that are like the roadmap. There's things in there that benefit you. But there's also things that you need to, you need to read every now and then. Right, like the the Bible doesn't talk about my my friends always say that the Bible doesn't mention toilets. Like, like you're not going to find every answer you want in the Bible. That's not what it's there for. So we have to ask then what what is the Bible there for? What is it trying to tell us? Why does God want us to read it? Like, why does He like preserved it all these thousands of years and it's still the pillar of our faith? Well, it's a story. It's a story of creation and then the salvation of how that fell and how it's going to be restored through Jesus. So it's. If we put it in its context and we take it for what it is, then we can start to say, okay, now how does this affect my life? What does this mean to me? But first we have to realize what the Bible is, which mainly it's the story leading to Jesus. He is the climax and then the explanation of what that was and what that is and what that will be. And that is very broad and very vague, but it's, I'm just trying to summarize sure, 66 sure. books in there. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All, all 66 of them. <laughs> uh, you just read the Bible just now. Um, I always make the the joke that, you know, if if all the disciples were to come back and Jesus were to come back like right now, you know, just walk in the room and just look around, they'd probably have a heart attack because, you know, like the toilet thing is what made me think of this because like just this material, they didn't really, they hadn't discovered yet. Right. You know, it took all these years for us to be able to, you know, get an aluminum computer or whatever that's probably plastic for all we know. Um, Or just the fact that, you all are listening on your whatever, and this mic is sending it to the receiver, which is sending through a cable to the sound system, which is sending to the live stream, which actually this is a pre-recording. Um, you were supposed to know that, but it says premiere in the corner. Yeah, they, they were gonna, they were gonna find out. Um, you know, all these different, you know, there's so much to it. But then again, Jesus lives in you, so he already knows about all this. Um, so that's a trick question. Okay, look, this is really distracting me. I forgot to tell y'all. Yes, I have boba right here. Sponsored no, by. you shouldn't make a comment about it. It's boba. It's a drink. It's fine. Last week I had a, str- a Starbucks mocha also glass sponsored by. right here. Also sponsored by. I wish. Um, actually, I don't wish. Did you know that the Starbucks logo is uh, actually sinful? Right. Yeah, my, also, the Christmas cup, we should, you know, boycott Starbucks. Well, we should just boycott Christmas. The whole thing. Yeah. My grandma, or er, my grandma, my mom does not go to Starbucks. And she does not buy Starbucks products. And she gets on to me when I do. Also Nike. Um, but that's another conversation. It's now, <clears throat> today. what you were saying. Um, how should we interpret the Bible and all these things? So remember what Elliot is saying, which is a very good point, um, about how it's the story and all that kind of thing. Because, you know, when we get into all these other t- um, questions and, you know, ideas that we're going to talk about, that is a foundation that you need to remember. Because they're, that you need to remember. Because, yeah. um, I mean, here, here's where cults begin like there's a cult literally of people who act like babies because there's that verse that is like you need to be a child to enter the kingdom and so this cult they they wear diapers and they you know google gaga they drool over the floor and they crawl and they act like babies because they take that literal and it's like what's wrong with you you know like so we have to be able to see what's clear and is something that we can apply and what's something that we need to look at it in its proper context for example did you know that the bible says God does not exist. I'm sure it says that. It clearly says, I can show it but to you But it's probably like a conversation with somebody. It's, it said, no, it's not a conversation. It just says, God does not exist. But what's the context? Well, the verse right before it says, only the fool says in his heart. Exactly, yeah. So see, that, yeah. That's, that's, that's the tricky part. That's why we is, don't... And especially if you get into an argument with like a gay person, which like if you're gay, you know, that's great. Whatever, uh, between you and God, go for it. Um, I severely disagree with you, but that's fine. Um, but a lot of like, I've gotten into arguments with like people I know Mm -hmm. that like lean the other way or, you know, they have different beliefs on things and they have their Bible verses to back it. Right. I'm like, okay, show me the full context of that. And I'm like, do you understand that that is not red text? That's a guy talking to another guy about something 
as they're talking about what they're going to say to God. You know what I mean? Like that, yeah. the, the, you know, that isn't, it's not yeah, what Even it is. that phrase that we use, like the Bible says, there's a preacher who says, um, the Bible doesn't say anything. Like what he means by that is like, well, here we have Paul saying something to the Ephesians. And so we can take that and we can see that obviously this is inspired by God and we can apply this to our lives in this way. And obviously I get what we say, what we mean when we say the Bible said this, I say that, but it gets tricky because we have, for example, Job, right? We have him being, having a horrible day, losing everything, his family, he gets sick. He's allowed to do this by God through the devil. And then his friends come and give him so many explanations of why this happened to him because he fell in sin, because this and that. And we have, I forget how many chapters of that. And then at the end, God comes and he says all of what they said, everything, that's all wrong. And I've heard sermons of things that Job's friends said. I'm like, do you realize that you're, you're making a sermon out of something that God literally rebuked and said was wrong? You know what I mean? So we have to be able to read what the story is saying, what every book is about, and ultimately know that it's always about the gospel. It's always about Jesus. They're, my favorite author is A.W. Tozer, and he always says, ask the question, is this exalting Jesus and pointing to Jesus? then yes, it's probably biblical. If not, then it's probably being taken out of context. It's probably being applied to something that it's not. And then that's when the Bible can be used to, for debates. Like you're talking about like homosexuality. Is it right? Is it wrong? And then we just grab the Bible between us and we start to fight about you know, what's right and what's wrong. That's not why we have this in a way. We have this to point us to him, to point us to the way. And that's the point. And it's obviously way deeper than that, but we have to always keep that. I guess it's the foundation, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. The, all all very good points. Um, another one that is you know very very controversial is how uh, some churches don't allow women to preach. Mm. Um, uh, I forgot. You know, we're on the spot here. Um, I forgot if Literally it was. The uh, yeah, yeah. I got you know I got strips over here. Spot. You know, my, my eyes hurt. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, I've got the, uh, it was either Apostle Paul or I think it was Paul, right, who said that women can't preach. But then you take it into the full context and it's like, man, well, should we really not let women preach? You know, it's yeah. that whole, how do you interpret the Bible and up to what scale? Yeah, we have, first, we have Corinthians 11 that says, when women prophesy in the church, let them wear a head covering because they're, you know, they're married. And then two chapters afterwards, they say women are not allowed to speak in church. Wait, you just said that if they do, they should just have, they should have head covering. How is it that they can't talk? I have a teacher to see if I was like, how are they going to prophesy then with sign language? You know, if they can't talk, so we have to be able to read into it. And some things are harder than others, but not everything. Like I don't want you guys to feel like, man, we should just leave that studying to the preachers and the scholars. I think that's a mistake that we make as Christians. Everyone's supposed to dive into it. We're all supposed to study it and know it so we can test what we listen, what we're being taught and see, is this actually what the Bible is saying? Like that's what the Bereans would do. They would test the scriptures. We should all do that. We might not get every answer, but we should not be scared and we should be willing to dive in. You know what I mean? And most things are clear. Like if I were to say, did Jesus say, love your neighbor or eat your neighbor? He said, love your neighbor. Are you sure? Yes, that's clear. That's not like, there's no need for interpretation in that. There's some things which are simple and everyone can get. And then there's some things which are a little bit more complicated. And so we can talk about this. As, we don't have it's to cause division, you know, and we can just figure it out together. So all, again, very good points. Um, another thing with that, though, is where like, um, if you're someone that listens to multiple preachers that each have different theological beliefs, mm -hmm. you know, you have to read your Bible. You can't like let the preacher read the Bible for you and then tell you what you should take from it, which a lot of people do, including yeah. probably us too at, at times, you know, like, wait a second, should I, maybe I should just stop listening to this, just go grab the book and read it, you know? Um, right. And so that's where a lot of uh, people, you know, you should really remember what you're saying, what the Bible is and what you should take from it. Now, it's funny that you said, um, you know, is this, this, is this, this. The next thing I have coming up is what should uh, Christians do if they are challenged on topics that they're not knowledgeable on. Now, with that said, though, um, I always tell the youth, you know, I'm 19. I've only studied up to a certain amount of the Bible. 
course I could study more and I should study more and I do study more. Um, but I'm not 50, you know, like I've, at some point, you know, you're, you've retained enough knowledge and you're just going to keep learning as you go. So I tell the youth, I'm like, look, if I ever, if you ever bring up something to me that I don't know about, I'm going to write it down and I will go to someone who does know about it and I will get you your answer. That's good. And that's, so I, that's humble. That's, so like that's I, how we should all do. Yeah. Well, ex exactly. You know, the, sure. if, if you don't know something, you right. don't need to act like you know it. It's fine. Exactly. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, like I'll go to my parents, uh, mm -hmm. the pastors, and, you know, ask them. But even then, the Bible is so big that you shouldn't limit yourself. Hence why you're listening to this podcast. I've had people from um, Elliot Reyna to Armando Aldusen to Linton Turkington to, you know, RJ and Gabe and Ray Garcia, you know, all kinds of people. Because you know, RJ was my roommate, from, by the way. Yeah, I knew y'all knew each other. I just wasn't sure how. Yeah, we were, we were roommates, Steve and I. Okay. RJ, right. if you're loving this, watching this, I love you. Yeah, he, sh he should be watching this. If he's not, this is going to be really awkward when he <laughs> discovers it. He's going to be like, oh, wow. And then he's going to text me like, bro, exclamation mark. Sorry, I never watched it. That's what he's going to do. Anyway. Well, I knew y'all. Anyway, let's, yeah. let's talk about this off air. Um, now, I will say, um, but even what you're saying, I bet you learned a lot simply by living with that person. Because out of a book so big that is supposed to, you know, tell the story and it's going to be the foundation of your faith, all these different things, you should get a second, third, fourth, fifth opinion. If you go to the doctor for a little skin rash, and then you go to a second doctor for a second opinion, you know you shouldn't do that with the Bible. You know, a, a very good point that you're confused about. That might be a, yeah. a little interesting metaphor. But no, no, yeah, that's a good point. But, so, you know, I tell the youth, I'm like, now, you're reading the Bible probably for the first few times when it comes to these new chapters because you're only so old. You know, you're only, even when you're 80, you're going to be like, wait, a verse said that? You know, like my mom's read the Bible cover to cover three times and every now and then she's like, wow, I didn't pick that, I didn't pick up on that. And you know, mm -hmm. it's just it's just the way that, you know, things go. So I tell the youth, however, you shouldn't walk around like nervous. God will prepare you for that moment that you're challenged if you're preparing yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had a time where I was in middle school and I wasn't really like, like I was, you know, I was Christian and I was, you know, I believed what I believed and, and I'd read my Bible, but I wasn't, you know, like preacher of, of the world out here. And I'm still not. Um, but the, this kid touches my shoulder and like, I have my headphones in, which is like, if you, if you're ever, especially on public transportation and someone has their headphones in, leave them alone. <laughs> they don't want to talk to you. That's why they have them on. The, the, literally. Sometimes I have my headphones on. I'm not even listening to anything. I just <laughs> don't want you to talk to me with my, I love you, my Christian, you know, we, we love each other. Um, but you know, Hey, we're also real to each other. Um, but this kid touches my shoulder. And he's like, hey, man, you know, I was doing this Bible study, and I wanted to know what your opinion was on uh, this and this and this and this. Never talked to this kid in my entire life. I was like, sure, hit me. And he told me, and I knew it was something that I had learned that Sunday before. It was like exactly, and he was like, dude, you just helped me out with a big confusion of mine. Thank you so much. And then he just left and never saw him again. So I give that example all the time. Because it reminds you that, so as I, as you, I'm sorry, I have not let you answer this question. Um, you know, as, you know, as Christians, what should we do if we're challenged on topics that we're not knowledgeable on? Well, God's going to prepare you, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you should just, maybe the way that God prepares you is by listening to Elliot's answer. So now I put you on the spot, Elliot. No, you, you basically gave the answer. Do? Like, I agree. You, people are here to help people. Like, that's what. Christianity is right it's a community it's like a family like let's listen to people who've done this more than us you know I I definitely don't know everything I have to ask questions all the time I like asking well, questions this is, this is actually why we do the podcast right the youth I tell them I'm like look praise and worship's over at about 11 11 10 after announcements and all that stuff probably 11 15 preaching's supposed to be over by 12 could be 11 45 could be 12 15 I'm always gonna have a lesson for you but I can only get so deep in the lesson. Mm -hmm. So the solution to this problem back in quarantine, especially when we weren't even seeing the youth, we weren't in person, we weren't anything. Um, I felt like we should start this podcast. I was like, you know what? I have all these contacts called the world. Um, I have Elliot here, you know, I sent Elliot checks. Hey man, when can you do the podcast? And here we are. Um, so I tell the youth, you know what? Give me the topics you want to learn about. And we will find someone that can answer your question. 
So we've talked about, you know, addictions, spiritual, you know, just check the library. Um, so with that said, it's where people are here to help people. It doesn't matter what scale of people. You can be like a booming mega pastor or, you know, some guy on the street, or you can be an Elliot who's just perfect a genius from CFNI. Um, anyway. But, but yeah, so, no one's gotten together. Like, even people who I admire and look up to, like, I have this, uh, someone that I know through my parents who's got, like, doctors in theology. And I asked him a question. He's like, well, I'm not, like, a Greek scholar. I can't answer that. I'm like, what do you mean you can't answer that? I'm like, you know Greek and Hebrew. Just He's like, but I'm, that's not my specialty. You should ask someone else. I'm like, like, what are you talking about? So, like, that that humility I think we should always have to to know that we're always learning. That's one thing I'd say. Another thing is is that is just listen to people. I had a couple of teachers at CFNI that said something that I didn't agree with. They said, um, don't read commentary. Just read the Bible, you know. Don't read any commentary. Don't, and I'm like, in a way, you're giving commentary. You know what I was, I was like? I was like, I'm here listening to your class. I'm paying for your class because I want to hear what you have to say about the Bible. You're helping me understand this. I may take it, read it, and then weigh it and be like, okay, maybe I agree with this, maybe not this. Like you said, listening to different people, I had different teachers who would literally contradict each other. I would have one class, one teacher would say this, next class teacher would say the opposite, and then I'd be like, who's right? And I'd have to go read and like figure it out on my own, but at least I could weigh in both opinions, you know? And I think that's important to like listen to different preachers, well, read different is, commentaries. The other thing is it's important that. to not phase out somebody. Mm -hmm. if you disagree with them on one point. Exactly. We tend for, to do that. For example, we this polarize. Is in, this is in English, so a lot of the Spanish people are probably not listening, although I'm sure a lot of you are bilingual. Um, when I told people I was going to have Armando Alduzan on, they were like, oh, God. They were like, you're lying. I was like, no, I'm having him on. It's like, what are you all going to talk about? I was like, the end times. And I kid you not, one person I said the end times to, I'm all excited. They were like, oh. they were like, well, that'll be interesting. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's because Armando Alduzan's a controversial pastor. Mm -hmm. Um, but that doesn't mean that everything he has to say is invalid. Right. There might be a few things that, you know, I disagree with him on, but there's other things that like, hey, I'd really like your opinion on what you think of this and this and this. And when his, your specialty is Revelation and Genesis, and we're going through a global pandemic where like everyone's at each other's throats, maybe I should have that person on. You know what I mean? So we talked about the end times and all that kind of thing. And now, you know, um, well, okay, hold on a second. I got to bite my tongue here. I can't give future podcast plans. Anyways, um, Elliot, uh, so what we've learned so far is what the Bible is, what the plans for it is, or that it lays out the plans. Um, and we've learned that as Christians, we should really get like a second opinion. And I come back to that doctor example, you mm -hmm. know, like the little mole on your, on your finger. Mm -hmm. You know, your doctor tells you one thing. Well, I'm going to go hear another doctor and see what they have to say about it. But when it comes to the Bible. And it's, like, maybe it's because we don't take it seriously. Or we don't think it's important. Sure. But here's the thing. I have a teacher who said this. Like, our theology, like, we use that word a lot. But, like, let's just change it. Our view of God, that's kind of, like, the best definition I like of theology. Our view of God determines how we live our life. It determines how we view the world, which in turn determines how we live our life. It's very important. It defines who we are. It should. So we should take it seriously. Like you said, like if we, if it's something that's medical, we take it seriously and we go, you know, have a second opinion. We take care of ourselves the same way we should be nourishing ourselves with the body, with the Bible. And we should continue to know God better and want to, because this affects all our lives. That's what we believe. Well, something that, you know, you said medical, mm -hmm. well, our flesh is temporary. So, you know, we, we freak out so much about the doctor. It's like, dude, you're leaving anyway. It's, not, you know, it's just a matter of when. And then the other thing is um, just the idea that, uh, hang on, I lost my train of thought a second. Um, guys, I have lately have been doing like a mental evaluation because in my other podcast as well, um, I keep losing my train of thought. I'm in the middle of a phrase and all of a sudden I, it's like my brain locks and I don't know what I was going to say. And that's very unprofessional. <laughs> and, uh, and, a lot of, and, then, and then it comes off like I wasn't listening. When I was, that's how I generated the train of thought. Right. Um, so anyway. Uh, You're talking about medical? Medical, and then right before medical, I was going to say something. Um, just laugh. We can awkwardly. come back to it. We'll come back to it. Um, now, <clears throat> we've talked about you know, getting a second, third opinion. Uh, man, that's going to kill me. <laughs> okay. Elliot, please explain to us, should we study the Bible the same way 
that we study are secular classes. Right. You know, when I go study history or English or math or whatever, should I approach it the same way? You know, should I try to retain the information? Should I, or, oh, remember the point. Uh, the, the most sad, tragic thing about, you know, sadly that's happening is if someone doesn't understand a point that the Bible is making, oh, yeah, I guess I'm never going to understand it. And then they just move right. on. And I think a lot of us are guilty of that. Even, you know, sadly, pastors are guilty of it. And it's not like, you know, a dog on this dog. It's just the reality. Out of an entire Bible, there's going to be things that you're not supposed to understand. Mm -hmm. But we also learn that there's things that, like, you have no reason to understand. Mm -hmm. God doesn't need to explain himself to you. Mm -hmm. Um and so that's some, that was just a point I was going to make, that a lot of, there are a lot of Bible topics that people are like, well, I guess I'm never going to get that. Oh, well. And then they go study something else. Yeah, and that hurts you. Like, it's like that analogy where they ha this guy, God tells him to push this huge rock, and he pushes it every day, and he pushes it. You've heard this analogy, right? And he pushes it every day, every day. And after a few years, the rock never moves. And he's like, God, why did you have me push this rock? And he's like, all right, now go push this log. And he was so strong because he had been pushing the rock every day. Even though it never moved, it wasn't really about moving the rock. It was about getting him stronger. In the same way, some things we'll never understand, but it shouldn't mean doesn't mean we shouldn't wrestle with it. We should wrestle with these things. We should dive in and be like, I don't get this, but let me try and let me pray about it. Let me ask. Let me read about it. Let me study. Let me question it. Let me go back and forth on. And then that nourishes us. That makes us hunger for God more. It's, it's good for us to do that. Exactly. Which would kind of lead me to answer the question you well, asked. And, but, and with that, you know. with the with the answer to your question, I think that you know, kind of laying up the build up to Elliot's answer, is uh, just the way that we talked about how God's going to prepare you for that challenge. Mm -hmm. Well, part of the way He might prepare you is how are you studying your Bible? You know, God might make something clear in that Bible that you need to remember, et cetera, et cetera. And so you need to be ready because it's going to happen to you. I always tell the youth, I'm like, look. You might think that what I'm telling you about this kid touching my shoulder out of nowhere is, like, weird and all that. But I kid you not, this week it's going to happen to you, whether you like it or not. Like, it's going to happen to you. I always, they always told me at Sunday class, hey, you know. Be ready. Some, be ready because somebody's yeah. going to ask you something. And um, it happens. And I've told the youth that one time, and one time somebody texted me in the middle of the week, bro, you're never going to believe what happened. Told you. Uh, so anyway, with all this said, sorry for interrupting you yeah. again, Elliot. I, you know, I really tend to interrupt a lot, and it's a problem. <laughs> now, how should we study our Bible compared to our secular classes? Well, in a way, I would like to encourage you guys to study it like you study school. Like, the same way you take it so seriously and you're so diligent about it, we should do that with the Bible. I don't know. For some reason, I have, I've met kids that are like, they're taking SAT levels, you know, their scores are super high and they're taking AP classes and they, they are, they know f dates of history and they're super good with math and this and that. And then when it comes to the Bible, they're just like, oh, I don't know. I just know about David and Goliath and Moses and this. And I'm like, I'm like, you have the ark that put like the animals. on. Yeah. It's whatever. like, I'm like, you're really smart. You could get so much from this, you know, but for some reason we feel like we feel the need sometimes to dumb down things of the Bible when maybe because we're scared that it'll be too much or they'll get confused. I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think we should encourage like the youth to continue to study it. Cause you can just like you are that diligent and you are smart and you can study these things in school, do the same thing with the Bible. However, that's one side. The other side, I want to say, don't study it like you study things in school because the Bible isn't a textbook. So that's the, that's the flip side to it. This, you can read an encyclopedia or a textbook and it's just facts. And the Bible isn't that. Like it reveals who God is and it reveals God's story to save humanity and to save creation. But it's not just textbook facts. Like don't do this, do this, don't do that. That's not what it's about. It's, it's a, a combination of so many types of literature, of historical, poetic, the letters, which are maybe the most practical we'd say, are still very, um, we need to take them within the historical context, if that makes sense. So we need to not study it like we do textbook, if that makes sense. But I am, I do want to encourage you guys to be diligent and to go ahead and, and use that big brain for, for the Bible, because you'll need it too, you know what I mean? <laughs> big brain. <laughs> big brain mode. Um, now, uh, uh, what you're saying is right on point. And another thing, though, is that, you know, 
a lot of secular classes and trainings can be used in the church. Mm. For example, a lot of people all the time hit me with, pero no que iba a ir a Cristo para las Naciones? Every time. Uh, I thought you were going to Christ for the Nations. Like, why'd you think that? Uh, I don't know, because, you know, you're a Christian. <laughs> like, um, I mean, I might go later. Yeah, maybe. Like, cool. but didn't, but, uh, well, hang on, I'll get to it. Uh, it like, <laughs> um, and then, you know, like, well, didn't your dad go there? Yeah. Didn't your uncle go there? Yeah. Don't two of your cousins go there? Yeah, probably a third one, probably a fourth. I don't know. And then, uh, uh, wait, but isn't your uncle a professor there? Like, yeah, well, why don't you just go? Like, I might, but you know what? I think that a lot in, in a lot of churches, there's a lack of, um, this is kind of awkward to talk about, but like, financial awareness, mm. how to run money without crossing your fingers and hoping <laughs> that things come in every month. Yeah, being wise. How to, you know, yeah, being, being wise. Being good stewards. A lot of churches are like, okay, please let the offering come in so we can pay the mortgage. How to really run money. So what am I studying? I'm studying finance. Be, and the other thing is because, uh, sorry, our, our producers are trying to throw me off and they're succeeding. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, oh, that's funny. Anyway, okay. Now, with finance and all that kind of thing, um, we live in a world where you have to work. You have to pay for things. Mm -hmm. And so now, again, this is not dogging on people. That I have a dad. I have an uncle. I have cousins that go to CFNI. I have a friend here named Elliot who went to CFNI. You know, this is not dogging on Bible school people, which a lot of people would perceive it to be, which it's not. But in my case, yes, I want to live by faith, but I want to have a firm, steady job where I can be in church and I can have my career. We've done podcasts on bivocational Christians. You should go listen to it. Um, and so, but then people tell me, but that time you're spending at UTA studying finance, you could be in Bible school. I'm like, yeah, and I can go to Bible school right after UTA too, can't I? I can graduate, start my job, start my profession, and go to Bible school at night. I can do that, can't I? Can't I? And I'll tell me, well, I guess I hadn't thought about it that way. Well, yeah. So now I can bring my finance knowledge that maybe the atheist taught me and go use that into the church and help build the kingdom of God, you know, all that kind of thing. So when we talk about, you know, do we study the Bible the same way that we study in our secular classes? That's kind of what, you know, what Elliot was saying is exactly, and, you know, the Bible is not a textbook. I think that was a very good point. Um, but it's also, you know, there's, there's pros and there's cons, and they both need to be used. It's not like it's not like where okay one more pro I'm gonna take that no, you need to take into account the pros you need to take into account the cons. The Bible is not a textbook you need to remember that, but there might be a way that the atheist is teaching that you need to use in church. There might be a way that you can do that. So you need to pick and you know you need to just do it that way. Yeah, it, sure. So you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Cool. And like I think even like historical context and all that stuff, which like you just learn in school, you can apply the same thing to the Bible. I had, I had a thing I wanted to do with you. For example, even when we talk about, like, the New Testament, right? We have, like... Now don't put me on the spot too I'm hard gonna put here, you on the spot Right now, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a letter for you, okay? We need, a, we, need an, uh, we need an angle right here. Somebody could go get the camera and put it right here for I'm us. write you a letter, and you're going to read it. That wasn't a joke, guys. Why are you... No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Don't read now this yet. Now they're talking to each other. Guys, it was a joke. <laughs> Don't, don't criticize my horrible handwriting. Am I supposed to be looking at it, or should I just no, wait don't, a minute? No, don't look at it. And I'm gonna oh, don't, don't look at the paper. Okay. Here, I'll look I'll look at uh, the wall over there. Here, I'll take a sip of my boba as well. <laughs> what should the listener be doing? If you haven't heard us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, <laughs> you should really do that, because it's a new way to spread the kingdom of God in this podcast of many blessings. Many blessings. Now, <laughs> Elliot seems to have finished his arts and crafts okay. project, and we will now return. Thank you for that ad-sponsored break. We post with Anchor. If you have not used Anchor, you should try it out. That's how we send to Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Oh, Again, those, that's those dang Spotify. Call to actions. All right, here we go, Elliot. So this is a letter from me to you. Would you okay. please be so kind and to read it to the audience? Yeah, we'll read it to the audience. Don't hopefully, Chris, don't criticize my whole Hopefully, handwriting. I'm literate. Wow, this is some handwriting you got here. <laughs> I my, told you not to criticize me. My handwriting's better. No, it's not. I, that's not what I was going to say. I, I literally was going to say it's not better. I don't know why I did that. 
That I don't know what just happened. Is it, is it readable? <laughs> just try. Are your name spells with one L? No, I'm just <laughs> okay. All right. So I've been dogging Elliot about that. Okay. The boys are trash this year. Elliot has done squat. Okay. Do now, you mean? Now I pause. think you mean hasn't done squat. Okay. Now, now pause I can right there. I can lay out to you all the reasons why that is not right. Now, pause. now there is a dash e. Dash e. Okay. Now pause. Now you know what I mean when I'm saying this. I do not know what you mean. However, <laughs> I will I will say I know what you mean for the sake of the podcast, but for the you sake know exactly of exactly for I the mean. sake of reality, Sadly, you know what I mean. For the sake of this. reality, I know this makes you sad. But I do not know what you mean for the sake <laughs> of reality. It's because of the plays they've been calling, right. and they have to restructure it for the new equipment. Anyway, there, all right, there's, there's all right, Elliot, this is a church it. podcast. If you want to talk sports, <laughs> let me know so, later. So there's a the clue. <laughs> so people might not know. Sure. I mean, if you're, if you're from Dallas, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but. Those who are maybe not from Dallas would say, imagine someone reading this a hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, and they would read this and say, okay, the boys are trash. Elliot has done squat. Be like, okay, the, po the boys. So every young man in 2020 was considered trash. And they would like try to assume these things and they wouldn't know that this is just a letter from Elliot to Ethan. And when I say the boys, I'm actually talking about the Cowboys. That they are trash. Yeah, we knew this year. <laughs> the, For whatever our reason, producers, you want to our say. producers have put on the back screen the audacity. <laughs> Can you read that? <laughs> okay. You can read right. that. That is a clear message to me. So, and then when I say Elliot has done squat, I don't mean me. I'm talking about Ezekiel Elliott, the running back. So the Again, context that here be, that can be contested. <laughs> the context here is what gives this letter meaning, correct? So the same way when we read the New Testament, we have to take the same thing into account. We have to know this is a letter from someone, like for example, Paul, to the Romans. Why did he write this? Was he writing back for some reason? And there's some of these answers we don't know exactly, but we have to keep it in mind when we read it. And that we have to do with one hand. And on the other hand, we have to remember that this is still inspired by God and that God, even more surprisingly, he sustained it and it survived thousands of years and here it is in our hands, you know, here I have the New King James from your, I stole it from your youth group room. So like we have this book in our hands for a reason. We have every letter that's here for a reason. It's not a chance. It wasn't this like secret council that, you know, is trying to manipulate us. These are different people separated from hundreds of years. And we have to ask, why do we have this? What does this mean? How does this affect my life? And that's, I guess, the tricky part. That's how we need to, continue to study it, to learn from other people, and then pray, which I guess is your next question. I'll let you get to that one. Sure, sure. Um, <coughs> that was a very good point. That's probably going to be a clip. That was a very good point. Um, I like what you did with the letter thing. I have never actually used illustrations like that. I'm probably yeah. going to start doing that. I'm going to call it the Elliot. Um, <laughs> now, this can be highly contested, but I really, I just have to say for the record, <laughs> that that is a problematic statement that you have made, um, and there are various debatable. reasons for it. Yes, the Cowboys are <clears throat> next to – yeah, we're in the NFC Sorry. least, so it doesn't That's matter. Um, uh, yeah, how the Broncos – okay, all right. <laughs> God, okay. All right, we'll talk about this later. Yes, um, but oh, it's because Ezekiel has been getting no okay, – all right, all right, all right. Okay, all right, we're good. The point you were making, though, is very good. Yeah. If you take it out of context – for example, no one's ever going to have to take this out of context. I'm going to go burn it after we're done with this <laughs> podcast. Now, um, I wish I had known this, and I would have said no to you mm -hmm. when you asked me if I had any pen and paper. Thank you for the However, point. that was a very good point. I, I can't emphasize that enough. What Elliot just did is very important, taking things into context. Mm -hmm. Now, when we take things into context, how does one pray Bible verses? Because you need to take the verses into context. Tell me that segue was not very good, Elliot. <laughs> now, how, do, how does one pray Bible verses? What is praying Bible verses, I guess I should ask you first. And then kind of how does somebody do that? Yeah, I mean, the best, I guess, book, if you want to call it, that we could do that with is the Psalms. It was literally for that. So I want you to think of, like, Israel back in the Old Testament. They had the temple, right? That's where they would come and encounter God. That was the place where God's glory would come down. And in a way, that was like they're, they were clinging on to hope that one day they were going to be able to be with God. God was going to be with humanity again. Then comes exile. All of Israel is taken to Babylon and their temple is destroyed. And the Psalms was like a temple, 
like a mobile temple, if that makes sense. Like they would have the Psalms and they would open them up and they would read and they would read the promises of God's faithfulness and they would read things about how great God is and God is my shepherd. And they would use that to pray. And in the first century, throughout all church history, the Psalms have kind of been for that. So that that's kind of been the main purpose for the Psalms. I've done it in my life. It's been um, one really good class that taught me how to do that. And I'd kind of done it before, but afterwards, like it's just been part of my life. I'll read a few verses and then I'll pause and I'll try to basically say what those verses said, but in my own words, if that makes sense. For example, let's just pull one. Uh, that's, that's a very good point you're, you're building up to that, yeah. you know, you, you take what you want from the Bible and not what it actually says. Um, I, I don't know if that's the point you were making, but that is something that happens. Anyway, like, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think I threw you off. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean? Like, I mean, like a lot of people will, you know, be searching for something in their heart and they go to the Bible for the answer, mm -hmm. but they're looking for something in specific. And so they might read the Bible and the Bible says this, 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 but you can take it out of context like this letter or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you can be like, awesome. The Bible clarifies my point. Right. But you're you reading into your day, it. But yeah. you're, yeah, you're not reading it in the way that you should be. You're not reading it objectively. For sure. So Yeah. And I think we, that's a challenge that we all have to make sure we don't do. Like, I think we all, when we read the Bible, we have these glasses. We just don't know it. We have these glasses. Well, especially when we're reading culture the culture and exactly. what we grew up with. Especially but, when we're know. reading it in a time of need. You're mm -hmm. not just reading the Bible. You're reading it in a time where you're searching for something in your heart, whether it be a new house, a new job, relationship, whatever. Um, if you're, if your heart or your conscience or, you know, you just went through something tragic, you're trying to find an answer. You're trying to find something in specific. So when you go read the Bible versus when you read the Bible on an average Tuesday, you're going to read it a little bit differently. And that's something that you need to avoid. You need to avoid because Elliot would never do that. Oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Anyway. Yeah. But like, but at the same time we can see the Bible and sometimes if you're reading in a time of need and then you can relate with what they're saying. Like for example, you can, well, yeah, there, there like, are, there are, if you're in a time mm -hmm. of need, you should read the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> I should probably say that <laughs> you should also go listen to us on Spotify and Apple podcasts. Thanks to anchor for helping us put that out. Okay, go ahead. Sponsored by Boba. Like for also example, by Bethany's cafe. Like here we have a Psalm from David, right? This says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And then you pause. And this is obviously David talking about something he was going through in that time. Some of these Psalms are even quoted by Jesus. And we can quote this when we need it. You know, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And right now, like we're going through such a weird time, right? God, you are my light. You are, remind me that you are my light. When I feel like I'm in darkness, may I trust that you will light the way, that you will show me what to do, that you will show me what's true and what's wrong. You are my salvation. I don't trust finances. I don't trust my health. I don't trust my father, my boss. Um, I don't trust the president, this government. I trust you that you are my salvation. You're the one who's going to bring me through this. Of whom shall I be afraid? I don't care what happens. If it's COVID, if it's riots, if it's this, I'm not going to be afraid because I have you. So like you, you take what it's saying and then you apply it to your life with the same principles. So that's what you have to do. You have to be able to read it in context, but then say, what are these eternal principles that are the same, that have been the same yesterday, today, and forever? You know, that's what we have to learn to do. Some verses are easy, like this one. Some are really hard, but I think that's when we can be able to pray it, and that helps our, our walk with God, our maturity. So I'd encourage you at least to take the Psalms. The Psalms are probably some of the easiest where you can, some Psalms You can also weird. sing the Psalms. Yeah, for sure. Like, just a bunch of hymns, like old school hymns. You know any, you know any good hymns? I don't know any by heart. I know, you know, I listen to a lot, Shane and Shane. They did like a whole album where they like, they went through the Psalms. Mm -hmm. I love those. Sure. Yeah, I went to a uh, little sidebar. Everything you said was magnificent. I magnificent. was not expecting that good of an answer at all. I, very good. Which does not mean I was expecting low of you, <laughs> Elliot. I was just expecting a little bit of a different direction. However, that was very good. Um, now, a little sidebar for y'all that need a sidebar. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I tend to pause a podcast after about 20 minutes, go do something, and then I come back and I keep listening. Um, it took me like a week to listen to a five-hour podcast on a topic that you know I love but anyway now I sadly had a friend pass away a couple uh, months ago 
um, one of three who was, yeah, I had three friends pass away this year, but that's not what we're talking about. Um, one who is, uh, their family is Lutheran. <laughs> if you're in YCT and you're listening to this, you're probably laughing already. Um, uh, it was a, it was someone who passed away in an organization of ours. So I was at the funeral. I had never really been to a Lutheran church. So I go in and first of all, the architecture, I was like, what is going on? I look at the roof and it's got the, I'm like, what is happening? And then I, uh, not like the classic cathedral. It was like a weird, and I walk in and I look up and there's like the giant organ and I'm like, what? I turn around and there's the organ and I'm like, and then all of a sudden I, uh, there's somebody up there, oh, the Lord, and you know, they're singing and all that. And, uh, of course I go, you know, my condolences. I'm, this is a depressing event. I'm not out here thinking about all these things. Although I am kind of a crackhead in my mind. I'm always like thinking about something. Um, people, I have some Karens that listen to this podcast who will text me, Ethan. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. The producer had their headphone on and I said, Karen really loud. So I'm so sorry about that. Um, somebody texted me, Ethan, why do you always have to move your knee so much in the podcast? Cause apparently I'm always like, um, or Ethan, I used to do that too. My mom Ethan, why do you, like this. why do you look in a different direction during the podcast? Well, it's cause I'm a crackhead. Now back to the point. Um, I'm always thinking about, you know, something and they were singing these hymns. Was I doing what someone should be doing and listening to the hymns and reading them? Cause like it's the Bible. No, I was looking at the architecture and I was like, the organ. I was like, now why? I'm glad I'm not Lutheran. And you know, my, uh, what was funny was the, uh, uh, family member of the uh, person that had passed away had texted me and they were, uh, or texted my friend who was sitting next to me. It was like, how many comments has Ethan made about Lutherans? And as they sent that text message, I was like, now why does he have to wear a stole? I was like, what's the purpose for that? And he's like, he wants to know how many comments you've made about Lutherans. And I was like, <laughs> then I stopped. <laughs> now, why am I telling you all this? Because sometimes those hymns would have been a lot of a lot of benefit to me. I would it would have had a lot of advantage for me to listen to what they were saying, mm -hmm. and maybe pray it on my life, sing them, mm -hmm. because it's scripture. It might be a different denomination, but it's it's scripture. I went home and I told my uh, my grandma and my mom about this, and of course they were laughing and you know all that kind of thing. But then they told me they were like but did you like listen to what the songs were saying? I was like, no, I was too distracted. And they were like, you know, that might've been a lot of benefit to you. What am I saying with this? With hymns and all these different things, there's a, the Bible has its things there for you to pray them over your life, not for you to wonder, well, it's being applied in this kind of ambiance. Maybe I shouldn't, you know, whatever. No, if it's the Bible, it's the Bible. Apply it to your life. Do you see what I'm saying? You know, even though I was distracted, I was at a time of my life where I really needed to hear what the, I went back and looked up the hymns and the things that I, I, if I had heard, it would have brought a lot of peace to me. It would have been a lot of benefit because when you're going through things, you need to turn to the Bible and not your crackhead energy in your mind. Now, Elliot, um, there was a very good point you made about, you know, praying Bible verses. You know, you take into context, you take the verse, you take the verse, God, I need, you know, this, I, everything that you said was very valid. Now, I think you added this last point, right? Or was that me? You got it, but I don't know if okay, well, it. Okay, well, I think we're I think we're kind of segueing to it is you hear about all these things, you know, like, well, praying these songs and all these different things you're hearing, what are they talking about? How do we know that we can trust the Bible? And how do we know that we can, um, how can we be confident that we understood what it was saying? We've talked about how sometimes people uh, disinterpret what the Bible is actually trying to tell you. Well, how can we read with confidence and trust what the Word of God is telling us? Yeah, and that's that's the other part, I guess. If you are like me and you're like, okay, let's go all in, let's get confused, and you start reading the hard passages and you read about a certain interpretation and then a different interpretation, and then you know there's there's debates going on, and then you can kind of get caught up and get scared, and you're like, okay, I don't even know what's What's true anymore? You can always come back to what we all agree on. Like even denominations, most of them, some some okay are a little crazy, but most of them we can agree about like ninety something percent, you know. And we have to come back and we can say we tr we can trust this, you know. We know that this is true. We know that this. What is the gospel? First Corinthians fifteen that Jesus came and died for our sins and rose again on third third day for scripture according to scriptures for our sins. 
that's the gospel, right? So we can trust that. We can trust that Jesus is Lord. We can trust that God is good. We can trust, like when it says, like clear verses, like I was saying earlier, like love your neighbor. That's clear. You can always trust that. You can always go back to what we know. And lo- that's, that's the majority of it. There's only going to be a few things which we may never know. There's going to be some things that we can, you know, wrestle with and doubt, and that's going to be okay. We can, we'll, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll debate about it, and we can still not break fellowship over it. I think that's been one of the mistakes that Christians have made. We've broken fellowship over disagreements, where we should be able to say, okay, you see things this way, I see things a different way, but let's talk about it. Let, let me see why you see this, you know. I read this, and this is what I think it means. And you might see it differently. Well, let's talk about it. Let's learn from each other and let's pray that the Holy Spirit within us can point us in the right direction. But how do, how do we know we can trust the Bible? Well, there's a bunch of reasons apologetically. I guess that would be a whole podcast. But in the essence, we can trust it because it is coherent throughout centuries. It's all pointing to Jesus. Jesus came and fulfilled prophecies that were over 300 prophecies that were made hundreds of years before him. Well, I would say there's, there's things mm-hmm. in the secular world that have Christian foundation, mm-hmm. like the death penalty or murder being illegal or you being arrested for stealing something. Well, if the Bible wasn't valid and Christians never existed, do you think that those morals and those values would be in place in the federal government? Yeah, that's a good point. Like morality, like the, the, the fact that morality even exists, you know, like we don't, I had a teacher who, always said, who would always say that we don't blame a lion for killing a zebra because it's just his instinct. This is just his natural tendency. A lot of atheists are actually Christians. Exactly. Like if, if you, <laughs> that's, that's another podcast, though. <laughs> anyway. Right, if, you, if you look at the morality, it's like, well, yeah, if, if we're just random chance creatures that, you know, popped up because, you know, chance, then, we, then why is there morality? Why is it wrong for me to kill you? And it's not wrong for a lion to kill a zebra, you know? We're, we're all just animals and creatures just acting out of instinct. No, there is a right and there is a wrong. And the worldview of Christianity is solid. It's based on that we're created with a purpose, that we're created in the image of God. And it makes sense of why there is morality. It makes sense why we have this longing for eternity. It makes sense why death feels some, like something completely unnatural. And not only that, it gives a solution to that, that it's God. It's bringing us back to him. So... Whenever we come, like, big picture, we zoom out and we see the Bible, and we see the story of, of God redeeming us and saving us through Jesus, being faithful to his love and his grace, and we see the purpose that we have as humanity and the hope we have as humanity, then we can be like, okay, this I can trust. Because everything else, if, you don't, if we don't have that, then, man, this life, then do whatever you want, you know? Like, at the end of the day, we can pretend to like enjoy every moment. Like you said, this life is fleeting. It'll be over and we have nothing to look forward to. And we have no reason for even existing. Well, it's good to the joke where it's like, uh, why should I get dressed if I'm just going to get undressed? It's like, well, why should I take a shower if I'm just going to get dirty again? Yeah. Why am I going to eat if I'm just going to get hungry again? You know, there's all that kind of thing. Well, why are you even alive if you're just going to die? You know, that's another, mm-hmm. um, anyway, well, that was a very good point, and I think it kind of closes up what we've been talking about. Um, thank you for sticking with us this long. Um, I, I mean, I think this has been very interesting, though. Um, thank so you for we listened to our ramblings. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely, thank you. Um, also, thank you for listening on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that again. Um, although you are helping one of the FAR links in every time I say the word anchor. Now, um, we have learned who Elliot is. We've learned a bit on how we should interpret the Bible. You have learned what should I do if I'm challenged on a topic that I do not know about. Um, And we've learned about secular versus Christian, the pros, cons, what to take, what not to take. And uh, we've learned a little bit about praying, what the word of God says. And most of all, how can we trust all of this? Um, Elliot, thank you so much for doing the podcast. Thank you for having me. Do you have any last points or are you good? Uh, one time I tried to close a podcast and I ended it and the guest was like, oh man, I had something I wanted to say that was so unsatisfying. <laughs> so I don't want to do that again. So, no, I'm good. I think, you're I, good, you're good. I think I've said well, it too much. Well, or? thank you so much for coming on the, you have not said too much. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, your insight was very helpful. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, I already know this is going to answer a lot of the questions the youth have given, uh, been giving me. 
And uh, to all of you listening, stay tuned for future podcasts. Sometimes they're in Spanish, sometimes they're in English. I will give you a hint. There is an 80% chance the next one is in English. It just needs to get booked first. Um, once it's booked, I will announce who it is and the following and the following. Um, anyway, if you want podcast gossip, that's too bad for you. Y'all have a good rest of your week.